Hi guys, in this video I'm going to give you the symbols and formulas you need to complete a one-way or one-factor ANOVA analysis of variance. Specifically, these are going to be the symbols that I use and formulas that you can use when you have a balanced design. Now remember, a balanced design in a one-way or one-factor ANOVA means that all your groups have the same number of observations. In other words, when you took those independent samples, random samples, from each of the populations, you took the same number from the first population, you took the same sample size from the second population, the same sample size from the third population, and the same sample size for as many populations as you were investigating. Okay, so this works in those cases. So that's a balanced design. Okay, that makes things a lot simpler, uh, believe me, with the formulas. Okay, so let's start with some symbols that I like to use in this, in this specific case. I use the symbol C for the number of groups slash you could say populations. Okay. I use N with a little subscript dot to indicate the number of observations, OBS observations, in one particular group. So that's the sample size in a particular group. I use N without a dot to indicate the number of observations across, let's say, all groups. Okay? I use x bar bar, this is pretty standard, for the grand mean. This is the mean of the means in a balanced design and or you could think of it as if you were to forget the fact that there these there were different groups and you were to treat all the data as if it came from one source this would be the mean of all the values okay i use x bar with subscripts to indicate the sample mean from group I, so fill in the blank for I, obviously I is going to be 1, 2, up to C. So if I have, if C, if the number of groups is 4, then I'm going to have X bar 1, and X bar 2, X bar 3, X bar 4. If C is 5, I'll have X bar 5 as well. If C is just 3, I'll just have 3. Okay. And x bar, remember, is just the sample mean. So it's the sample mean from each particular group. S squared, that's sample variance, with a little subscript i, is going to indicate that this is the sample variance from group i. Again, i going 1, 2, up to c. Of course, if I'm talking about variance, I can also talk about standard deviations. So S without the square is the sample standard deviation. I put a little subscript. Now I'm talking about the sample standard deviation. That's just my abbreviation for standard deviation from or for group I. Again, I being one to C. You'll have C of these, C of these, and C of these. Okay? Uh, what else is important? Uh, symbolically, what other symbols will we use? Uh, we're going to be interested, uh, well, it's important for us to know the level of significance of, the of our one-way ANOVA hypothesis test, so that's always important to look for in an example. Okay? All right, so now I think we can get to the formulas. Okay, so knowing, having these symbols now, I can talk about the sample variance 
pooled, or rather, this is a subscript, by the way, okay? So pooled variance. So what this does is it takes these guys and pulls them into one number because there are C of these and I want one value so I'm going to sum them so I'm going to go from 1 to C I'm going to take each of these guys add them up and then once I have all that I'm going to divide by C because there's C of them okay <clears throat> so you could think of this as the average of the variances of the individual group variances okay next this variance of the x bars this is a subscript the x bar is a subscript so what this is going to do is it's going to take all these guys and it's going to tell me how much they vary from each other if they're all the same number which is very unlikely then they have no variability so this would be zero but that's never gonna that's I've never seen that actually happen in practice these are gonna tend to be slightly different than each other how much variability are, is there well that's what this is doing Variance member, generally speaking, is a measure, measure of how much variability there is. When I put the subscript x bar here, I'm saying I want to know the variability of the x bars. Since I have c of them, I'm going to take each one of them, subtract from it the grand mean, which is this guy over here. I'm going to square this and I square when I do variances because I this way I take care of the problem of negative values counteracting my positives so I square each one of those differences and I divide each one of those differences by C minus 1 okay and I don't just do this for just one of them but I do it for all of them and furthermore I add them up so that's what I'm doing here. I go from I equals 1, so I go from the first group all the way up to the Cth group, the last group, and I take the X bar, I subtract X bar bar, this doesn't change. And I divide by C minus 1, C doesn't change either, right? So the only thing that's going to change here is this, okay? And when I do an example of one way ANOVA by hand, I'll show you how to actually calculate both of these in practice if you're not so comfortable with these uh, summation notations this e looking thing which is actually a Greek letter capital Sigma okay once I have this s squared pooled s squared x bar I can get the final item I need which is the F statistic so this is the test statistic this is important because all this that we've talked about so far culminates to this value. The test statistic, which is an F test statistic in a one-way ANOVA, is calculated by multiplying n dot, which is this guy, by S squared x bar, dividing that by S squared pooled. Now this formula looks very simple, and it is because we have a balanced design. Okay, in our examples, all the groups have the same number of observations. Okay, so there's just one n dot number. And this will give us our test statistic. Okay, and once we have our test statistic, we're done calculating things. We go to a table and we get what's called F upper critical value which you can just write F with a subscript U, no pun intended. You go to a statistical table, which when we get to an example, I will show you how to get a value from this table. You go to the F table, you need three items. You need alpha, you need degrees of freedom one, which is also called degrees of freedom numerator. You need degrees of freedom 2, which is called degrees of freedom denominator sometimes. DF, degrees of freedom. Okay, just shorthand. You need these three items. 
alpha is given to you by the in the um, example you're working on that's the level of significance typically 0.05 or 0.01 degrees of freedom 1 or degrees of freedom numerator same thing is calculated by taking C which we just saw before subtracting 1 always just take C minus 1 degrees of freedom 2 or degrees of freedom denominator is calculated using by taking N which was the total number of observations across all groups minus C once I have these three components I can go to the F table which looks kind of like this and using the correct F table which in this case I'm talking about making sure it's for the correct level of significance you notice what I've highlighted here 0.05 I go to the table and I see that along the columns I have the numerator degrees of freedoms and along the rows I have the denominator degrees of freedom so I find the numerator degrees of freedom that I'm interested in say C minus 1 is, th is 4 so C was 5 right so if C is 5 then C minus 1 will be 4 then let's say N was 20 so degrees of freedom denominator will be 15 and I and see where those two intersect and I'm being blocked by this annoying thing over here but if you follow me carefully I'll go slow of course you can always pause these things rewind make them full screen and so forth if I go in I carefully see that this is 3.06 for this made up example I just made up a C I made up an N I just wanted to show you how to get a particular um, uh, FU using this convention okay that's how you get the F upper critical value from the table okay so let's go back now so now coming back here once I have FU I compare it to F so what's F F is this guy we come we calculated F using all those all our data that we uh, all those form these formulas and all those symbols that we've talked about but FU came from a table once I have F and FU I can make a decision so decision let me title this actually let me change my font color make this the final step decision rule for one way ANOVA if F is greater than FU you reject the null hypothesis if F is less than FU, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. It's as simple as that. Okay, so you need F, which comes from your data, calculated with a lot of hard work, FU, which comes from a table, then you compare the two. And using this ru these rules, you make your decision, which is the final result of your hypothesis test. Okay, so be sure to uh, rewatch this at your own pace, but also now go on to the example I do by hand with the parachute data to see how we actually, um, to, to see all these in action, all these items we talked about here with actual values. Okay, and you can work through that by pausing, rewinding, watching it over, and so on. Okay, so put in the time and this should, this is within your reach. Okay.